So today we're going to be breeding some Danios. We're up at Nick's shop in Yongpili. You guys can come and buy fish here as well. And down here we've got some Danios. So we've got leopard Danios and there's also some long pins in here of that variant and we've got zebra Danios. Now we're going to be catching out um, possibly a little group of each variety and we're going to breed them at home. And Nick, I was wondering if you can tell us exactly how to execute this breeding project um, and go about it the right way. All right, so these are going to be super easy to breed. We're going to need obviously males and females. The way you tell the males from the females is males are normally a little bit more slender yep. and the females get like nice and fat. And that's basically the way I tell. Like yeah. the females get really full of rows. So I'm going to do my, I feel like the males also have kind of like a tiny bit better color, like, but that's not really, a beginner won't be able to understand that. What I'm going to do, I reckon the best thing is just to like take five of each and then you're guaranteed at least a male and a female. And that's yeah. really all you need. Um, there's a few different ways to breed them. They're egg scatterers. So they're going to, like, I think first light in the morning, the males, you've got to fatten the females up. So I'd feed them like bug buffet um, for sure. And then maybe some frozen food. Yep. Females get nice and fat. The day you want to spawn them, you, leave, you set them up the night before. First thing in the morning, the lights come on, they'll start breeding and they'll lay like a ton of eggs. The males will chase the females, you only need a pair, and they'll lay hundreds of eggs and then you've got to raise the eggs up, which right. is a whole other process mm -hmm. which you're going to have to figure out. So would you breed them in a tank, would you breed them in a bucket? Um, I mean like if you got the tank, I'd do it in the tank. Yep. Um, I've definitely got tanks. So I'd probably, I'd probably set them up in a tank with like rocks along the bottom. Yep. Something to stop them from eating their eggs because they're going to spawn and turn around and eat their eggs straight away. I set them up with the tank with like rocks or like a lot of plant along the bottom, just something that the eggs could fall through. Maybe some moss. Yeah, just like spawning mops or whatever. I would <clears throat> add them in the night, the night before. Yep. Turn the lights off. Next morning, turn them on, watch them for a couple of hours. They'll do all their spawning and then take the adults out and raise the babies up from there. I'd even consider dropping the water right down after I knew that those fry and slowly raising it up. Well, I'd, the fry will probably eat bug buffet from the first day, but that's that's what I would do. Okay, so give you some nice ones. And you can crossbreed these. Yeah. If you want, just for a bit of fun. Okay. So leopards, and I'll just grab. They actually use Danios for um, genetic testing because they're so easy to breed. So universities and stuff actually grow out zebra Danios, breed them. I know quite a few people who've come in the shop who've actually worked in the science lab that breeds zebra Danios. Wow. That's yeah, because cool. they're so easy to breed. Yeah. They're definitely the easiest egg scatterer. Like if I was going to recommend an egg scatterer to someone, like a beginner, first time egg scatterer, it'd be these guys. So, there's them. Oh, I some more water, and then you can take a home. Alrighty, so this tank here is going to be um, our little breeding setup for the Danios. It's a two foot tank, I think it holds around 80 litres. It's already got like pre established matured aquarium water in there, it's been set up for quite some time. Add a sponge filter. A heater to keep your water temperature around I'm gonna say around 25 get some form of like small creek rocks I actually just went and collected mine just then wash them and just lay them on the bottom of your aquarium like I've done here plant matter and hopefully the eggs are gonna fall down um, you know, into the rocks and now what we're going to do is add our Danny Oaks and they go It's the next day and we've done a few things this morning in preparation for hopefully our baby Danios. What we've done is we woke up, we turned the lights on and we sat down and watched our adult Danios and what they would do. And you know, within about a couple of minutes I think they instantly started spawning and the location that was the most popular was where um, I thought it would be and that was where the plants are so they kind of go in where the plants are and I mean they'd go down the rocks as well I don't think they're really that fussed about it um, and something I also noticed which is not good is you'd get these single 
adults that would go down to the rocks and then go and then pick up the eggs that they, you know, freshly laid. So what I did is I left them in there for a few hours this morning and came back and then I removed the adults and put them into another aquarium where they'll be reconditioned for, you know, the next time they breed. And then I dropped the water level in the aquarium down to about 50%. The reason why I did that is because fry find it way easier to find food particles in a smaller water volume. The other thing I did was I turned down the flow on the sponge filter right down to a few bubbles. And the reason why I did that is because when fry first hatch out, they're basically lifeless. They kind of just flick around the place and they don't do a whole lot of free swimming. Even when they are free swimming, if you have the flow too high in your aquarium, um, they're gonna actually kill themselves and get burnt out because they're gonna just be constantly swimming and they're gonna get tired real quick. So if you don't have a lot of flow in your aquarium, it enables them to take a break, take it easy and just consume food and grow. Once they get to you know a decent size, then I start turning up the flow and making the sponge filter bubble a whole lot more. So there's not a whole lot we need to do now apart from wait. I will be observing this tank for the next few days, looking out for babies, and I'll update you guys when I've spotted the first baby. I thought it would have been a bit longer before I updated you guys with something about the Danios, but I actually just discovered something pretty interesting. So today I've been inspecting the tank again in search of any fry, but obviously it hasn't been long enough. It's the next day, it's not like anything's gonna happen. I just check it anyways. And I got my pipette, and I thought it'd be a cool idea to see if I could suck up some of the eggs in the crevices of the rocks and see if we can have a closer look at the eggs. So I've actually done that, and we've got a fair few eggs. So if that's what I can suck up, this amount of eggs, I think there's probably, I don't know, maybe eight eggs that I've sucked up and just with a pipette, I think we're gonna have a raging success with the numbers we're gonna be able to pull out of this tank. You just basically go in there and just suck it out. But yeah, let's have a closer look and I'll see if the camera can pick up some of these eggs. It's really, really interesting. I actually didn't expect the eggs to look exactly like they do, so that's kind of cool. So there's an egg there, there's an egg there, there, I just disturbed an egg there. I just thought I'd pull them out so that you guys could have a closer look. I don't have a macro lens, so I can't really like zoom in. But um, yeah, there's some Danio eggs in there. Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna, one, dude. There's gotta be at least at least a hundred Danios in here. It's actually been about a week now, and there's probably over a hundred baby Danios in here. They're definitely all hatched out. This method definitely works. Something else that I've been doing throughout this time of about six, seven days is in the actual, well, where I put the Danios after I pulled them out of here, another aquarium. I actually chucked into that aquarium something similar to this. Um, just a clear container and I put a mop inside of it and every every morning and every afternoon all I do is literally just pull out that container and pour it into this aquarium and I did that for about three or four days I guess what's in here right now would be more than if I had not done that so I think every pour I was putting in about something like five eggs six eggs at a time every morning because I'd go in and eat the eggs as well so I wouldn't find this like a very viable method, but this is like a way to get um, the most out of your breeding, I guess, cycle, is to, even when you're um, priming them up, getting them ready to breed, is just chuck in a mop inside of a clear container to catch some eggs. Um, and that just means I can add like, you know, maybe another 15 to 30 eggs. It's just like another good way to like maximize how much eggs you're gonna get out of an aquarium. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Kind of hard to explain, but every morning I get bug buffet and I get like one to two pellets. They're about that size, like they're not giant. And then I just put it in the aquarium and I kind of make up a bit of a milk. And I do this in the morning and afternoon and any time through the day that I get a chance, I'll feed them. And if you feed them lots 
um, of small little feeds multiple times a day, they're going to grow a lot quicker than they would if you feed them one or two big feeds. The crazy thing about um, Danios and most fish that I breed is they'll take on the bug buffet crushed up the first day they're out of like of an egg. Like they, this stuff works wonders. Then when they get a little bit bigger, I'm going to start um, feeding them baby brine shrimp, and then. I'm just going to grow them up, get them to a big enough size to fit into one of these grow out aquariums and I'm going to grow them to semi adult size, maybe slightly smaller and then I've got a special surprise for you guys. So I won't be letting the surprise loose just yet um, because that would ruin it and I think it's pretty friggin awesome but I'll update you guys when all of these babies have grown to a big enough size to the point where we can do what we want to do with them. There's nothing more that I can show you guys that I haven't yet done or will do. All I'm going to be doing is feeding them multiple times a day, doing water changes until they get to size. There's nothing really to raising the babies that would be worth um, filming, except for the journey maybe, and I'm going to be updating you guys with um, the end of journey results anyway. So. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope there was nothing I also missed there um, that I could have added in. I think it's pretty straightforward. A lot of people would agree. An aquarium, sponge filter, a heater, and fill it up with water. Chuck a whole bunch of tiny rocks on the bottom of the aquarium. A bit of plant life in there. Chuck your little school of danios, your colony, and leave them in there for, you know, overnight, pull them out the next day, or you can leave them in there for a few days, try and maximize how many eggs you get out, chuck them in another tank, get a clear container with a mop, and keep collecting the eggs every day, and pouring them into the tank until you start seeing a hatch, then stop doing that, and then raise up the babies, feed them a few times a day until they get to size, you know, you can start adding in baby brine shrimp as well, with the crushed bug buffet, you can feed egg yolk, you can feed Hikari first bites, doesn't have to just be bug buffet or anything else. Um, and then, yeah, then you're sweet, then you bred your Danias. It's really, really simple. I'll be definitely um, trying a couple of other methods out um, for videos in the future. But, yeah, I will catch you guys when, hopefully, I've raised up these babies and we can put them in a special surprise.